Hello, we're in Northumberland today and welcome to Hadrian's Wall. So this is a little bit of a different video to usual, being a bit more history based rather than travel based, but Hadrian's Wall has always fascinated me with its 1,900 year long history. And so today I wanted to tell you the story of this epic 73 mile long wall and how it went from being over almost 4.5 meters high, which is like four Ellie's high, <laughs> and also about the incredible ruins that we can still see today. Today we are walking a three mile stretch of Hadrian's Wall. We started at the Steel Rig car park and we are walking via Sycamore Gap to the famous Housesteads Fort. So if you do like what you see in the video and you want to do the exact same hike, those are your three waypoints to follow. But yes, this three mile stretch is home to some incredible views and some incredible history and it's a short hike that I'd recommend to anyone. So here we are inside one of the mile castles on Hadrian's Wall in a little bit of shelter from the wind, which is definitely needed because up here in Northumberland, it is windy. But let's start right at the beginning in the year 43 AD, which is when the Roman Emperor Claudius began the Roman conquest of Britain. And by around 100 AD, there were multiple Roman forts in this area, all connected by a road called the Stain Gate. And the Roman Emperor Hadrian came to England in 122 AD and he probably began building Hadrian's Wall this very same year. Hadrian was known for his interest in architecture so he probably designed the wall himself. And it took around 15,000 men six years to build this wall. So, big job. A common misconception is that Hadrian's Wall was built on the border between England and Scotland, but that's not actually the case, as Scotland didn't actually exist yet at the time this wall was built. Although it was most likely built as a frontier defence, basically a way so that the Romans could control who was coming in and who was going out of their kingdom, as the only way to get through this wall was the specific forts and mile castles and gates that are placed uh, at various points along the wall. Hadrian's Wall is actually part of a 5,000 kilometer long Roman frontier that reached its height in the second century. There is actually still remains and evidence of the wall in the Netherlands, Belgium, Germany, Switzerland, Austria, Slovakia, Hungary, Slovenia, Croatia, Serbia, Bulgaria, Turkey, Syria, Jordan, Israel, Iraq, Egypt, Libya, Algeria, Tunisia and Morocco. Just to give you an idea of the size of the Roman Empire. So. I need a breath now, and let's head to our first uh, scenic point, which is Sycamore Gap. So here we are now at Sycamore Gap, which is where Ellie is chilling and eating a square. What is it? Rice Krispies. Rice crispy squares. <laughs> <laughs> but this is probably where the Romans would have done the same thing. There's actually remains of uh, some buildings that used to be here. They would have eaten a rice crispy. No. <laughs> you said they would have done the same thing. <laughs> well, without the rice krispies. But, oh, okay. But chilling. But this tree, in fact, is a very famous tree. This, in 2016, was the most photographed tree in England. And you can kind of see why by this iconic view that's behind me. So it is our rest stop today. It would have been the rest stop of the Romans. So we're going to sit and admire the scenery for a bit and wait till Ellie's finished her whatever, I've forgotten again Rice what it is. Krispies. Rice Krispies squares. You can't stand in the wall. Oh wow, are you a Roman? I'm a Romanian. <laughs> <laughs> So here we are walking along another very dramatic bit of the wall. You can probably see that the, uh, the Romans picked very specific landscapes to build this wall on, such as massive cliffs and lakes. Which... 
So as I said, this wall used to be around 4.5 meters tall and uh, up to three meters wide in places, which meant that there could be a walkway running across the entire wall. In fact, what we can see today is only actually around 10% of what was here. So that just gives you an idea of how imposing this wall was. And did you know that George R. R. Martin's Game of Thrones was very inspired by Hadrian's Wall? In fact, the wall, the wall to the north from Game of Thrones, was inspired by uh, the author's visit to Hadrian's Wall in 1981. Not that Game of Thrones is relevant at all anymore after that shockingly bad ending, but there you go. Here's the real life. Wall of ice, a little bit less icy, but no less awesome. So, as I said, this wall is 73 miles long and it stretches the entire breadth of England. But to the Romans, it was 80 miles long and this is because they measured their units of distance differently to the way we do. So basically, the Roman unit of distance was mille passum, which literally translates to 1,000 paces. Therefore, the Romans measured one mile as exactly 5,000 feet, whereas we measure it today as 5,280 feet meaning it is now known as 73 miles long, but to the Romans it was a nice round 80 miles long. So this behind me, just over there, is another mile castle, which means, we've done another mile, which means we are very, very, very close now to Halstead's Fort. So here we are in Halstead's Fort, and as I said, Halstead's Fort is one of the finest examples of, of a Roman fort anywhere. And it's just mad how much is left. I'm really excited to find out more about it. In fact, all of these Roman forts followed a template that was sort of copied over, which is why we know so much about the design. And it was much more than just this fort here. It was surrounded with um, evidence of farmland, uh, smaller houses, Roman civilian villages often sort of set themselves near these forts and there's even a well way off in the distance over there. So these are remaining foundations behind me of uh, some of the old granaries for storing some of the f seed which just proves that there is uh, there was farmland around this area. So behind me you can see the foundations of the old barracks that would have been here. There would have been around 10 compartments and each compartment would have slept around eight men. Uh, and we were just pointing out, they had beds and everything. So, bunk beds. Luxury, <laughs> almost. This foundation that I'm standing in here is the old hospital. That's right, they even had a hospital. The technology shown here is mind-blowing. It's incredible. I mean, they had underfloor heating as well, which is just insane. I mean, I, I feel like most people think that that's a modern invention, but no, they were doing it. So uh, this is just uh, such a surreal place to be. Look, functioning toilets. 2,000 years old, they're still going. That. It's cool. So these are actually the best preserved Roman toilets in the country, uh, which is really cool. And when it rains, you can actually see how they worked, how the drainage system worked. So during the excavation of Halstead's Fort in the 1930s, the archeologists that excavated it found two bodies. One of the bodies had a dagger between its ribs and they were found in one of the Roman settlements surrounding this fort. And they were underneath the floor of an old Roman tavern. So there's a murder mystery in itself going on here. Unfortunately, the bones were lost during World War II, so we'll never be able to figure out what happened to them. Hello. 
And so here we are now, after the trip, back at home, because I realised when editing this video that I must have been way too excited about Hadrian's Wall because I totally forgot to film an outro to the video. Uh, so here that is now. But basically I would totally recommend a trip to this, you know, any part of Hadrian's Wall I think is incredible. Um, this three mile stretch that we hiked was, it's a very popular stretch and I would totally recommend it, especially Halstead's Fort. It's just an amazing example of Roman architecture that's still standing. It's totally mind blowing to be there and just some of the best landscapes that I think I have, well, ever seen in England I would say. So yes, I have another video if you're interested on top 10 things to do in Northumberland. If you've been inspired by this video and you wanna you know, have a trip up there and you need some more inspiration, feel free to check that out. I'll link it here and down in the description as well. And yeah, subscribe if you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one and goodbye.